In these next sections, I'll provide an overview of the Trinity assembly algorithm. It's not necessary to understand all the details of the Trinity algorithm in order to effectively use the software. If you want to, you can think of it as a black box with read sequences as input and assembled transcript contigs as output. But it is useful to understand what is happening at the various stages of the assembly when monitoring its ex execution or trying to troubleshoot various aspects of its behavior. Jeffrey Martin and Zhang Wang have an excellent review on the topic of next-gen transcriptome assembly, and in part, they highlight several of the features that are common among various approaches to assembly. This includes the use of the De Bruyne graph, which is at the heart of Trinity and other assembly algorithms. In the next few slides, I'll walk you through the process of transcriptome assembly using De Bruyne graphs, and I'll be borrowing figures from this review. The first step in a De Bruyne graph-based assembly is to construct the De Bruyne graph from the sequence reads. Each read is decomposed into substrings of some specified length k. Each word of length k is called a k-mer. In this example, k is set to 5. So here, each 5-mer is extracted from the read. An ordered list of k-mers is generated by scanning a window of length k across the length of the read. You'll notice that each k-mer overlaps the next k-mer by exactly k-1 bases. Then, a De Bruyne graph is constructed by signing each unique k-mer as a node in the graph and connecting immediately overlapping k-mers by an edge. This is a very effective and compact way of representing the sequence data within the reads. For example, hundreds of millions of reads can be sequenced, and the identical sequence regions within reads become compressed into individual nodes within the graph. At positions where related sequences diverge due to allelic polymorphisms, splicing variations, repeats, or due to sequencing errors, the graph will branch and can form bulges or loops. After building the graph from all the reads, the graph is typically pruned to remove bubbles and structures that likely stem from sequencing errors. And the graph is compacted by collapsing those nodes that form linear unbranched chains of overlapping k-mers. And for example, this linear chain of k-mers is compressed into a single node in the compacted graph. Now, to reconstruct transcripts, paths are traversed across the graph. In this example, there are four possible paths for the beginning to the end of the graph, each path shown traced by a different color. By traversing each path, a different transcript sequence is generated. In this case, each of the four differently colored paths generates a different sequence as shown. By taking into account the paths that the reads trace through the graph, along with any mate pairing information, constraints can be placed such that not all possible path combinations are reported, but instead only those paths that are best supported by the RNA-seq reads. Both genome and transcriptome assemblers leverage the De Bruyne graph structure but are tuned to assemble reads according to very different expected characteristics. This is why you wouldn't want to leverage a genome assembler for a transcriptome assembly and vice versa, since each method is highly specialized. Some of the key differences between genome and transcriptome assemblers include the following. Genome assemblers expect that the read coverage is going to be rather uniform and will often discard sequences that occur at high coverage as repetitive sequences. Transcriptome assembly needs to consider a wide range of coverage levels spanning several orders of magnitude since the sequences with high coverage are more likely to represent highly expressed transcripts instead of repeats. Genome assemblers aim to generate a single contig per locus, possibly two if tuned to separate haplotypes in a polymorphic genome assembly. In transcriptome assembly, it's understood that single genes can generate many alternatively spliced transcripts, and multiple contigs are reported per locus where evidence of transcript complexity exists. And finally, in genome assembly, reads are assumed to be derived from either strand of the double-stranded DNA molecule. But given strand-specific RNA-seq reads, transcriptome assemblers should aim to assemble sense and antisense transcripts separately. Trinity, of course, was designed to take all of these properties into account. A significant difference between Trinity, as compared to all other assemblers, is how it goes about building the graphs. Genome assemblers and other transcriptome assemblers that are built on top of genome assemblers typically build single large graphs. Trinity, instead, tries to partition the data into many thousands of small graphs 
ideally one graph per express gene. This is possible because most express transcripts tend to be non-overlapping. Having many small graphs lends itself to massive parallel processing, which is an added computational benefit.